precious baby born today. Come together this Christmas with A Christmas Miracle, an album by Joshua Mills. Fifteen anointed and glory packed Christmas songs, all on one heart touching album. Have yourself a miraculous Christmas this year with this holiday classic, Christmas Miracle, an album by Joshua Mills. To all the world, you've come to bring us peace. Hey everybody, it's Joshua and Janet Mills, your friends and family in the glory. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Glory Bible Study. We're excited for you to join us tonight, and we are going to press in for some miracles, talk about some miracles, yes. believe for some miracles, rejoice for some miracles, and it's just going to be a miraculous night. So we're so excited to have you with us. Tonight is a miracle night, and uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas miracles. And so we want all of you to extend your faith and uh, join us tonight, expecting yes. that, you know, that was the word that the Lord gave me specifically a few weeks ago when I was praying about the month of December, he spoke to me and said that December is the month of expectation. Amen. It's the month when we need to expect something from the Lord. And so I don't know if you're going through something in your life right now where you need a miracle you need a breakthrough, you need a healing, you need a deliverance, whatever it is that you need, let's press in with divine expectation because this is your moment to receive it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Look at everybody joining us from the <laughs> Netherlands. Oh, wow. Mom and dad. Hi, mom and dad. All the way in the, uh, Toronto, Anoma. It's wonderful. St. Louis, Houston, Texas, Illinois. I saw that Susan Unger was on there from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, Kimberly Barron from China Spring, Texas. So many wonderful friends. Why don't you uh, leave a comment and tell us where you're watching from tonight? We'd love to see it. We'd love to see the city you're watching from, the country you're tuning in from. I know people watch this early, early in the morning from Europe yeah. and uh, at lunchtime in Asia. You know, it's amazing it's how amazing. all over the world people are connecting for the glory of God. It's yes. wonderful. We have Australia, the UK, Kuala Lumpur. Did I say that right? Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. Malaysia. Yeah, <laughs> Malaysia. absolutely. KL. They call it KL. Alberta, mm -hmm. Mississippi, Florida, awesome. all over the place. Wonderful. India, Arizona, Nairobi, Kenya. Wow. We are so honored for each and every one of you. And I know somebody that has been faithfully watching our Glory Bible study, Adeline Brown. And yes. I wanted to say a special hello and that we are praying for you yes. and believing for God's glory to refresh you, to minister to you, uh, to comfort you and strengthen you, Adeline. Our prayers are with you and we just love you so, so much. We do. We love you so much and we so appreciate your prayers and your support and your expectation yeah. each and every Tuesday for what God will do, what God will say, and what God will release through Glory Bible Study. Um, your support has meant so much to us. Your prayers have meant so much to us. And I know that my uh, parents went to visit you last night, and they told us that you prayed a blessing over us. And that that just meant so much uh, when we heard that. Mm -hmm. It just so really, really touched our that. heart deeply. We received that blessing wholeheartedly, yeah. and we're just so thankful uh, for your support over the years, your faithful partnership and just your encouragement and your prayers have really meant a lot to us. And, and so much fruit, um, is added to your account because of your participation and what God's done in this ministry. Absolutely. So we're so thankful for you, for your life and your legacy. You know, I've known, um, the Browns for a long time. I mean, I don't remember when in my childhood, I first met them, but I was real young. And um, Krista, uh, now Mueller, uh, but Krista Brown at the time used to babysit me and my brothers and sisters. And of course, she she got older and she married Pete. And uh, Tim, her brother, Tim Brown, who's now a pastor in, I think, Oil Springs or Petrolia in that area, um, he was one of my camp counselors. And every year at youth camp, when we go to youth camp, uh, the Browns were always there. Yes, uh, that's El where I'm Eldon at. Brown and 
Adeline Brown, and um, I remember them always as prayer warriors and very deeply spiritual people that just loved Jesus and loved the word and loved to see the gospel reach mm -hmm. people and empower people. And they have such a beautiful family. And we were able to minister in Sarnia last year. Yeah. And I was able to meet uh, Pete and Krista's children and they have grown up. And they're, they're now at universities and college and um, serving the Lord, loving the Lord. And it's, it's so amazing to see that legacy continue for people who are so solid in the faith. Amen. And um, that's what I just so appreciate about Adeline Brown. And, and all these years later, you know, it's amazing how sometimes things come full circle. Yeah. All these years later, when we started doing Glory Bible Study, of all people to connect, you know, somehow Adeline got connected to what we're doing here. And, um, and she has been a prayer support to mm -hmm. what we're doing on Tuesday night and has been- And no matter where she's been, if she's been in the hospital, She's been anywhere. She has always made sure mm -hmm. that she is a part of Glory Bible Study on Tuesday yeah. night. So it blesses my heart so much. Wow. So why don't you all stretch your hands out to Adeline right now? Because she is in need of a Christmas miracle. And so right now, why don't you stretch out your hands all over Thank the world? Jesus. Let's join as the nations just speaking miracles and glory and God's blessings and his favor and his goodness. God, I thank you that you yes. are releasing miracles into Adeline's life right now in yes, Jesus' Lord. mighty name. I got, God, I thank you that you do the impossible, you do the thank unusual, you. you do the extraordinary. You show up and you do what only you can do. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for releasing that miraculous flow right now that comes with divine strength, yes, that Lord comes Jesus. with supernatural healing that comes with restoration, that comes with oh, divine energy, the invigoration of your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for the touch of wholeness right now upon Adeline's life in Jesus' name. Let it be. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Awesome. And so many people are in need. So that prayer, you can receive from that prayer for your life. It's true. And really just expect God's miracles to overflow in and through you. We also wanted to make sure that we thank and welcome our Miracle Worker partners. We are yes. so thankful for your generosity Wow! in prayers, in support, in sowing consistently into this ministry. And we're so thankful uh, for each and every one of you and how you've partnered with this ministry and seeing the message of God's glory spread through the nation. So thank you so, so much. What you're doing is helping us to be able to write the Bible studies every single week, get, get the message out, distribute books and CDs and teachings all over the world. I mean, just, we are sowing into yeah. the nations. It really is international glory. The glory of God is going all over the world and it's being sown as a seed for the fulfillment of Habakkuk's prophecy to come forth where it said the earth shall be filled with the knowledge, the revelation, the wisdom, the, the understanding of the glory of Amen. the Lord. And we're seeing that come to pass in our day because of your faithful support through both prayer and finances. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you're doing. And uh, we will be sending out an email this week because we are going to be doing another Zoom for our partners yeah. only. Uh, we're going to be doing another Zoom meeting at the end of this month, December. So I'm looking forward to that. We had a wonderful Zoom uh, last month and we're going to have another one this month. And we're going to continue these as long as the Lord leads us to. So. Yeah. So be sure to check your emails, Miracle Workers. And speaking of emails, yes. make sure you're on our email list to everyone by going to joshuamills.com, going down to the bottom of the homepage there. You can enter in your email address. And every week we're sending you the Bible study notes uh, to glory Bible studies. And they usually go out on yes. Wednesday evenings following the Tuesday night study. And so be sure because they are wonder filled, word filled, <laughs> power filled study notes and that I, will bless your life. And oftentimes we can't get through mm -hmm, all true. of what has been put together. And it's so true. this is something where you can take more time and go through and study the words, study the scriptures yeah. and just really let God's revelation um, bring some new fresh manna for you. I don't know whether you've noticed Janet or not, but when we first started be beginning to do glory Bible studies, we were writing, you know, two, two and a half pages. Oh, of I Bible noticed study today. Notes. 
<laughs> and our notes continue to get yeah. longer and longer and Pretty longer. Pretty soon the notes are going to be like mini books. This one, week. this one from this week is seven yeah. pages long. Yeah. I got it back from Harold McDougall who edits our notes every single week. And, uh, you know, he is a glory editor. He edits in the glory and he, he's the one who, um, edited Ruth Heflin's glory, all of her glory books. And so many glory books that you've read have had Harold's anointed touch on them, but he sent these back in seven full pages yeah. of notes this week. Yeah. So you're going to want to get a hold of this these. So glory. make sure you get your email into our list and uh, go ahead, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification button so that you get the notifications when the new videos come up and, uh, Go ahead and pass this around. Spread, invite other people into the gl glory, into the, yes. what God's doing here at Glory Bible Study because it is life-changing. It's life-shifting. I heard somebody, uh, they told me this week, they said, Glory Bible Study is giving me a deeper love for the Word of God. I and that, that blessed my heart so much because I yes. thought, God, that's, I mean, that's the whole reason why we're doing what we're doing to, to make people fall deeper in love with Jesus to fall deeper in love with the word, want to be committed to the word, want yes. to, to investigate the truth of who God is in all of his goodness, in all of his glory. And, and that is, is happening. The, and he is the word. So it is, is. this deeper love for him because yeah. he is the word. And you find strength and encouragement and stability and security, which so many people so desperately need right. in these days. It's true. You know, stability and security. And you find it in his word. And so we're so glad that we can get together every week and get into his word together we and are. receive from his truth. You know what I noticed, Janet? The only thing that's been missing, I was just looking at the, the, the picture on the screen. Sure. And I realized that we never decorated for Christmas this year. Well, we All have of, a little bit behind us. A oh, little, yeah, a you're right. Garland. Okay, you're right. There is a little, a little bit of garland. garland. I almost don't notice it because it's been there for so long. Oh, but but maybe, we needed more light. We need more lights okay. and maybe trees. So next or, week, since it's the last Tuesday before yeah. Christmas, we're going to reposition where we are going to be seated for okay. a Bible study so it does feel more Christmassy. Let's and you'll do feel that. like you're in our living room um, Let's having do that. That'd a be nice. Christmas get-together in the Word. That will be really, really nice. So that's what we'll like do that. next Tuesday. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Great idea. Um, we've been trying to get kind of into that Christmas mode. We went away with some leadership friends here at the church over the last weekend. And we went up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yes. And that was so fun. We had, we had not been up to the Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area for probably 15 years. It had been yeah. a long time. Lincoln was really young. And it was so Christmassy and all the lights on the street and um, all the music playing in the air. And there's such a wonderful uh, Christian atmosphere up there, too, where people are really, you know, the, as they're celebrating Christmas, they're recognizing Christ and what Jesus Christmas is, is really reason. all yeah. about. And so it was just so wonderful to get away with our family and be up there. And it's got me kind of all in the holiday mode. And um, anyway, I was getting downloads over the last week about this next Bible study. Actually, probably for about two weeks, I've been getting these downloads about Christmas Miracles. And now this was the name of a holiday album that I recorded several years ago. I mm -hmm. say holiday because it actually includes a Hanukkah song on the album. Um, but Christmas Miracle was the name of the album. But I was thinking about how really at Christmas, it is an opportunity to believe. And that word believe, B-E-L-E-I-V-E, -E -E, that word is like, that's spell that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I just, however, thank you for spelling. Yeah. That. However. Okay. <laughs> but like in caps, we see that everywhere during the Christmas season. Yeah. Yeah. People will take it and decorate their mantles or they're hanging on the wall. That word believe, believe. And some people, they misplace that and they're like, believe in Santa Claus or oh believe goodness. in the magic or there's a, whatever. A, there's an amazing house here where we live in a neighborhood down the street. And they have the most amazing Christmas light display. They do. But what is so amazing is that just as amazing as like the Santa and the sled and, and the sleigh and all these other decorations, they have the most humongous nativity scene I've ever seen set up in somebody's property. Yeah. And at the very top, it says believe. Yeah. 
and it's over it's the It's more spectacular than the Santas or the elves. It really or the is. Reindeers. It is so it's, huge. I've never mm-hmm. seen somebody at their own property set up such a grand display of the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And at the top, it says belief. And the way that they've set that, it's it's off in a way where it is, there's a reverence and it there's a glory really around it. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it has that word believe. And I think when we see that word believe, we need to remember that during this time of recognizing the birth of Christ, and do I think Jesus was born in December? Actually, most scholars would say he wasn't. And so I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there when he was born. But if I believe, you know, the scholars, most theologians, I would say it wasn't in the month of December. But what I love about the month of December is that it has been set aside as a month. When we get to celebrate Amen. this thing that we know is true, the birth of Christ that did happen at some point in mm-hmm. history, and we get to recognize and, and, and celebrate the whole story and the surroundings of all of it. And I believe that when we're focusing on the Christmas story and the events leading up and the events that are surrounding it, that just our faith believing, that connection believing. Yeah actually connects us to the miracles of Christmas, the miracles that are found in the Christmas story. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight is why you should believe in Christmas miracles. And Janet, I want you to open up with 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And it says, we also thank God continually for this, that when you received the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its inherent supernatural power (laughs) in those of faith. So there's several things just in this scripture that is so wonderful when we think about it, because it's talking about recognizing that the word of God is not the word of mere men, but it literally is the word of God. And that this word isn't just something that you hear. And it's not just stories that are told. It's not just uh, lines that are written on a page, but this word is effectually at work in you. Who believe. If you believe. And that's the key word right there. And I'm going to circle it here. Believe, believe. You've got to believe. That's our responsibility. As you believe, it says there's supernatural power that's released to those of faith, those who are in faith. And so this is what we're pressing into right now, saying, okay, God, we're going to go into the Christmas story. We're going to read about some of the events tonight. We're going to discuss and talk about some of the things that happened around the Christmas story. But as we're reading this, We're extending our faith tonight and saying, God, tonight is a night for my Christmas miracle. We're expecting. Right now, we're we're ready for Christmas miracles in our own lives. God, even as you've done miracles all throughout history and you released this major miracle 2,000 years ago through the birth of Christ, God, my life is open for you right now. I'm wide open to receive what it is that you have for me right now. Thank you, now, Lord. Right now. We receive right now. it in Jesus' name. Why don't you pray for everybody right now, Janet? Just pray for everybody. We're going to extend our hands up into the glory and just open up to receive. Thank, thank you, you Jesus. Lord. Father, we just thank you. When we come expectant of your miracles tonight, Lord, thank you, we Jesus. choose to believe. We choose to believe your word on purpose. We choose to believe what your word says. Thank and you, we Jesus. receive wholeheartedly the miracles that you have before us. We thank you, Lord, for your written word. We thank you for the revelation and the manna that comes forth from your word. Even tonight, as we speak about it and we revel in it, and we thank you, Father, for that impartation from your word, the impartation of the miraculous to touch each one who believes. Receive it wholeheartedly. We do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, 
let us adore him christ the lord come on why don't you lift your voice and say oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord tonight as we come to the word tonight as we come into the the things of god we're coming with a heart wide open saying we want to adore you jesus yes our eyes are fixed on you jesus you are our hope you are our light you are our miracle god you are everything we need and so jesus we Thank receive you, you tonight in jesus mighty name amen, amen. we believe Thank you, Jesus. When we read the Christmas story in the scriptures, we can find seven specific miracles that happened in the events surrounding the birth of Christ. And I believe that these events prophetically speak into our lives today. And so this is what we're going to begin to look at. You should believe in these Christmas miracles for they are available for you right now. I love this. Right now. Right now. Let's pull it down right now. Miracles now, <laughs> miracles now in Jesus. Wherever you yes, need a miracle Lord. right now, just pull it down. Just right receive now. it right now. Thank you. Healing miracles right now. Yes. Miracles for your children right now. Thank you, God. Yes. Miracles in relationships right yes. now. Miracles thank you, Lord. in families. Thank, thank you for them right right now. Now. In, in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Miracles of wisdom and understanding. Oh, right now. Right now. Right now. Wisdom right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles of provision, yes. divine supply, and abundance right now. Receive thank it. You, Pull it down. Pull it down. Right now in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank wow. Okay, let's look at this number one. The first miracle of the seven that we're going to look at in the Christmas story. Is a miracle of God's revelation. God had a plan for Mary's life, although she was initially unaware of it. It took an angelic visitation from God's messenger, his angel Gabriel, announcing his purposes for her life in order to capture her attention. Yeah. This came as a surprise to Mary but it wasn't a surprise to God for this had been his divine plan all along. Yeah. Many times we are completely unaware of God's plan for our lives, but during this Christmas season, posture yourself before the Lord in order to receive his divine revelation that has the power to change everything in you and around you. Now I want to say something about this word divine revelation. Because this goes beyond just being um, the Logos word. We can open up our Bibles, and we've done this many times. We've opened up our Bibles, and we've read something in the word. And, and we don't feel it. We don't sense it. We don't connect with it. But we've read it. And... I think sometimes we've often quickly gone through the words, mm -hmm. sped read almost through the word. Yeah. Without really absorbing the truths that it contains. When you absorb the word, it gets into every fiber of your being. Where suddenly when you begin to read it, see, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. But there's a point in our faith where suddenly something connects and we can feel our spirit leap when we read the word mm -hmm. because now it's not just a word, but it's a revelation. Mm -hmm. It's as though the spirit of God shines his light upon these black and white pages. I was just going to describe it as the lights turning on. The light turns on and suddenly we see it bigger than just being on the page. We see it alive. Mm -hmm. And this is where we come to know the word as the living word, 
the living word. The living word is revelation. And when you get the living word, then it doesn't matter what the enemy said, Amen. what anybody else has said. When you get the revelation of it, suddenly you're illuminated and you're turned on to something new in God. And this is what happened to Mary. Yeah. When the angel Gabriel appeared and spoke to her, it wasn't just words being spoken and she, they're just going past over her head or in one ear and out the other ear. But when they're being spoken, her eyes are being opened. Her spirit was being enlarged mm -hmm. and she was having a revelation. Now they call this uh, classically in the church. They call this the miracle of God's revelation. They call this the annunciation. I'm going to write that down here. The annunciation. This is the announcement, right? Yeah. This is the, the grand announcement when heaven announces its plans for Mary. I mean, here she is this, we talked about it last week, no more than 15 years old. Yeah, She's in her early teenage years. She's minding her own business. She is to, she's betrothed to uh, Joseph. She's going to be married to him, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not married yet. And it's, it's all in a plan. And yet mm -hmm. the, the angel shows up and says, you're going to be with child. Now let's read this. Let's read yeah, here's Mary's the, encounter God's in the surprise. Christmas story. Let's Jen, I'm going to have you read this right out of the amplified Bible. Luke chapter one, verse 26 to 30. And it says in the scriptures, now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, greetings, <laughs> favored one. Huh. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Thank you, Lord. Do now, not be afraid. What I think is amazing about this, look at the revelation, okay? There's, there's a few things here that are happening. The first thing, revelation is he calls her favored one yeah she probably didn't know that until that point right that she was favored by god right when you think about god speaking into your life even today there are things that god thinks about you god thinks good things blessed things that god thinks about you his dreams are bigger than the dreams you have for yourself but it's not until you capture the revelation of God that you begin to recognize or realize right. or are able to align yourself with his purposes. Right. Because up until now, you may be thinking all the time, I'm a failure. You might be thinking, I'm sick. I'm impoverished. Mm. I'm without. I, I come from the wrong family. There's generational curses in my heritage. You, you, there could be a, a bunch of things. I'm, I, I'm a disappointment to everybody. I mean, I mean, there can be a lot of things that you think about. But the truth is that when God's revelation comes, suddenly he shines a light and clarity begins to come. And suddenly your mind where there's been so much confusion, yeah. suddenly the chaos goes, confusion scatters, and clarity comes. Ooh. Amen. And I sense that even right now, I see it right now, there's those of you that are watching right now and you've been in so much chaos. You've been in so much confusion. Your mind has been in such a mess, such a tangled web of thoughts. But even right now, the Christmas miracle that's coming to you right now is a sound mind. Peace. Peace. Clarity, mm -hmm. God making declared announcements over your life right now that you would hear the voice of the Spirit speaking Amen. as He begins to announce and proclaim His blessing over you. And He's calling you His favored one. Yes. Wow.
Yes. You got to receive that right now. Just like Mary was perplexed and she thought, how could this be? And not only once was favor spoken over her, but twice. You yes. see it again when the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now, we've said this a lot of times, Janet. When God speaks once, we should listen. Mm -hmm. When God speaks twice, what? You better get ready. Yeah. You better get ready. Why? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, it will be established or confirmed. When God says something twice, I mean, he is fixing to do what he's spoken about. Favor. You are Jesus favored. Name. You are favored in Jesus' mighty name. Now is the day of Receive God's favor. It. Now is the day of his salvation. Receive it right Receive now. Receive that now favor over your life. This is a Christmas miracle for you. Amen. You are the favored of God. Amen. Number two, look at the second Christmas miracle. The miracle of conception. In the life of Mary, conception happened as the Holy Spirit overshadowed her with his glory presence. In the glory, we receive the divine seed of God. Hmm. And seeds can look many different ways. Yeah, seeds can. can take um, many different forms. It is the supernatural seed planted within us that contains the power of to birth fruitfulness in every way. In every way. This is the miraculous power of God to reproduce himself inside of you. Reach out to heaven right now. Yield yourself right now and receive the glory seeds that are being given to you in this season, Amen. in this moment right now. Yes, we receive now, it, Now, Janet, would you read the, about the miracle of conception that happened in the Christmas story, Luke chapter 1, verses 31 to 35. Amen. Listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, Israel forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. <laughs> Mary said to the angel, how will this be? Since I am a virgin and have no intimacy with any man. Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Wow. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. Do you see that? That it was the divine seed that was placed within her, mm -hmm. but it happened in the overshadowing yes. of God's glory presence. <laughs> in the glory, everything is possible. Amen. And even right now, there's a new glory that's moving into your home. There's a new glory that's moving into your atmosphere. There's a new glory that's moving into your life Amen. right now. Thank you, this Lord. is the glory of God's presence. And in the glory, all things are possible. Nothing is too difficult. In the glory realm, miracles happen hallelujah yes. so many people there are questioning is, how will this be wow how will you do that lord how will i see this miracle come forth in my life don't All try to figure it possible. out don't try to figure it out just receive the miracle of conception receive the god seed it's amazing in this season right now it's a season, we know this as a season of generosity. Amen. This is a season of gift giving. This is a season when people are more generous than any other time of the year. This is the time when you go to across the street to the neighbors and you take them a gift. This is the season when you go to people that you normally don't share gifts with and you, you have a little for them here and I have a little for them there or you have a word to give them or a little Christmas card to bless them with it. You know, this is the season of generosity. There are seeds all around and even in the Amen. spirit, there's great seeds that are being deposited from the generous heart of the Father into your life, but you've got to be willing to receive the seed and the receiving of the seed allows a conception to take place. So good. God is releasing seed dreams. He's releasing seed thoughts. He's releasing seed words. He's releasing financial seeds. He's releasing Amen. all different kinds of seeds. Just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Lord, so be it unto me according to your yes, Lord. word, God. I receive according. To what you are doing. I, I align myself to receive. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Okay, the third miracle. Let's look at this. The miracle of angelic assistance. 
when Mary became impregnated with the divine seed of God, she feared that she would be misunderstood by many and that even her fiance, Joseph, would not understand God's supernatural process and plan. Now, I want to say something about this, because so many times when God begins working in our lives, when God begins doing something, you are going to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, especially by those that are closest to you. Um. Those that know you the best also know you at your worst. And so those that are closest to you sometimes also are the ones who can be the greatest critics because they know all the reasons why God couldn't do something or why God shouldn't use you or why you couldn't be the most anointed. And so sometimes there's that emotional and spiritual battle that's taking yeah. place of feeling misunderstood not being accepted. But what I want to say is this, that God has a plan. You do, you never need to defend yourself when you're moving in the spirit of God. When you are flowing in the glory of God, operating in your call, in the anointing that God has given to you, you do not need to defend that to any person. All you need to do is rise up what God has given you and be faithful and true to the call. Well, if I could just add something here, oftentimes when we're believing for miracles, especially our own personal miracles, um, we think that maybe it's just for us, but God has so many plans within yes. miracles. There's it's miracles true. within miracles and there's people that are a part of the miracles. God wants others to be a part of that miracle. And so there's many people that in you believing for something in your life, God is going to reach other people. Maybe those that maybe didn't understand what was happening. Yes. But as they see God unfolding this miracle in your life, now they can see the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God and the awesomeness of God and, and be brought into this miracle yeah. and believe themselves where they didn't understand. And then they see what God has done. And now they're a part of that miracle. It's true. I think oftentimes about something that we've talked about many times, Paul and Silas in the prison cell, mm -hmm. they, they were put into prison, not because they were doing something wrong. They were actually put into prison because they were doing what was right. They were being faithful right. to the call. They were preaching the gospel. And because they were doing what they were called to do, so people got offended. People got upset. I mean, it's a whole scenario, but basically they got thrown into prison. Yeah. They could have in prison then become grumpy disgruntled, complained, lost focus yep. and stopped doing what they're called to do. But instead, the Bible tells us that in the middle of the night, they begin praying to God yep. and they begin singing That's psalms right. and hymns unto the Lord. Yes. And as they did that, their praise shifted the atmosphere. Not only did God send an earthquake, a manifestation of glory to release them from the terrible prison cell that they were in. But the Bible says that the jailer and his whole family were saved also. I love that because of Paul and Silas's obedience to even walk through the difficult things and the difficult oh times and staying faithful to the Lord in the midst of difficulty, it allowed not only them to get their deliverance, yes. but others, the jailer, his whole family, they got delivered Amen. also. They received household salvation. Yes. So the word to you is this, that God is on the move. God is working. He's got angels that are surrounding your life, going ahead of you, surrounding you on every side. Yes. Do not worry about the outcome. God already has your outcome in place. That outcome is victory. It's breakthrough. It's deliverance. Amen. All you've got to do is be faithful to the call where you're at right now. Janet, so many times in our ministry, as we traveled around, especially in the early days, mm -hmm. we were misunderstood by many, many people. There would be unusual manifestations of gold dust, manifestations of angel feathers falling in the meeting. There would be manifestations of gold dripping from our body. Mm -hmm. There would be manifestations of curtains uh, to God. swinging and flying in the atmosphere. Spirit winds beginning to come through the room. Oil would begin keep to flow going, from my forehead, going. from my hands, from my feet. Oil would start to yes. flow from different people that were in Glory the congregation. Diamonds would start falling in the room. People would start gathering gemstones you, from Jesus. heaven. And all of this caused 
quite a stir. It caused, yes. it, it caused for many a stumbling block. They couldn't receive what God was doing because they were too focused on the manifestation or the package in which he was bringing it. But Pastor Jack, uh, I believe it was Pastor, uh, sorry, Jack Deere. Um, Pastor Jack Deere said that oftentimes God will offend your mind to reveal your heart. And we found yeah, ourselves walking so through this where God, we weren't trying to offend people. We were just trying to we're, be faithful to the call, what amen. God was leading us to do. Amen. <laughs> but in doing what God had called Thank us to Jesus. do, many became offended. Why? Yeah. Because they wanted to receive the spirit in a way that was comfortable, a way that was familiar, a way that was a past wineskin or a past move. So and yet good. God is on the move. He's continually moving. He's doing something new. And yeah. so we were misunderstood. Mary was afraid that she was going to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And she began to worry about how God was going to work out this yeah. whole situation. But if we keep on reading this, she had no reason to worry. Right. You have no reason to worry. If you're being misunderstood, you have no reason to worry. When we were misunderstood, we had no reason to worry. God will work it out. God just have works to be it out. Faithful to follow this is and it. be obedient to what he's asking. This of us. is it. When you're faithful to the call, when you do not bow to the pressures of man, when you do not bow to the, the religious system of the day, when you do not bow to it, but you stay faithful to the Holy Spirit of God, doing what you're called to do. In that, God has a divine setup, a divine yes. plan. He's orchestrating things that you cannot see. He's going behind the scenes. He's moving in the middle of the night. And in this case, an angel this, appeared. This is called faith. It's faith. This is, this is faith. faith. <laughs> this is faith yes. and walking in the anointing yes. and living in the glory. All three realms cooperating together. The angel appeared in Joseph's nighttime dream. See, God was working in the middle of the night and spoke to Joseph about God's ways, settling his heart and yes. causing him to be open to the supernatural workings of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right now, we should expect the glory of God to go before us through the ministry work of angels, even in this day. Yes. They have been sent by God to clear the way, open divine doors of opportunity, set you, the Lord. course for you to be supernaturally protected and secure that, as you Jesus walk name. in the plans of the Lord. I'm prophesying over you tonight by the Spirit of God that had me write this Bible study. I'm going to declare it again, that you should expect the glory of God to go before you, Amen. Through the ministry work of angels, they have been sent by God to clear the way, open divine doors of opportunity, and set the course for you to be supernaturally protected and secure as you walk in the plans of the Lord. Right now, angels are being released to go ahead Amen. of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank and you, it's Jesus. It's as you walk in the plans of the Lord. Not Thank your you, own Jesus. Walk, yes. Not where you decide to yes. go, but where he has decided That's to go. That's right. Absolutely. When we're faithful to walk in the call of God, Amen. in the purposes of God. Come on, just begin to give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you, we worship you. We praise, praise you. We thank you. you. That you are the way maker yes, and that Lord. you are sending your ministry spirits ahead of us. God, I thank you for each and every one that yes, is watching Lord. this Bible study tonight Lord, as they Lord, choose Lord, to step Lord, out in faith, as they Lord, choose Lord, and Lord, decide and purpose Lord, in their heart Lord, to walk in the yes, call that you placed upon them. That there are angels going ahead of them, preparing the way, opening doors, securing their protection, their deliverance. Yes. God, I thank you that you are clearing the way from every enemy yes, assignment Lord. that's been in the path, that it's being abolished in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that victory is secured. I thank you, God, for a harvest of souls, harvest of yes, healing, Lord. harvest of goodness, harvest of glory that surrounds each and every one in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes. So let's read about this in Matthew chapter 1. Verses 18 to 25. Look at how much we're getting out of the Christmas story tonight. Come on. Now the birth it's awesome. of Jesus. It is awesome. He is awesome. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the power by of the, the Holy power. Spirit. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Overshadowing. And Joseph, her promised husband, being a just and righteous man and not wanting to expose her publicly to shame, planned to send her away and divorce her quietly. <laughs> this is the natural plan. <laughs> this is the natural reasoning. This is yes. the natural mindset trying to figure out how all this is going to work out and everyone's going to stay safe. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Thank you, G This is the third Christmas miracle, the yeah. miracle of angelic assistance. Thank you, God. And in that dream, the angel of the Lord said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. She will give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. The Lord is salvation, for he will save his people from their sins. That's that's what the, the name Jesus means. Jehovah saves. The Lord is salvation. And, you know, when we're talking about the seeds, we we're just talking about seeds being sown. God named his seed. Yeah. He named sure his seed did. Jesus. Why? Because the purpose of that, what a man sows, that shall he also reap. Every seed reproduces after its Kind. This Amen. is the law of the seed. Amen. He sowed Jesus, Jehovah saves. Why? Because he needed a harvest of salvation in the yes. nations of the earth. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. It's wonderful. All this happened in order to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated means God with us. There it is. Then Joseph awoke from his sleep after having this angelic <laughs> encounter in his dream. The word says, then Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary to his home as his wife, but he kept her a virgin until she had given birth to a son, her firstborn child, and he named him Jesus the Lord is salvation. The Lord is salvation. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. It's wonderful. <clears throat> Number four, that brings us to number four, which is the miracle of the eternal God becoming man. One. I mean, you think about that. One of the most unusual mysteries of the Christian faith is how it was possible for the eternal God, Lord of creation, Lord over all, to become a man in the flesh, Jesus Christ. It happened because of God's great love for humanity. This miracle had been prophetically foretold in Micah chapter five, verse two, but as for you, Bethlehem, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one shall come forth for me, who is to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth appearances are from long ago, from ancient days. This was God's plan from the beginning. And yet there was an appointed time for it to happen. Mm -hmm. Jesus came into the world to become our personal savior, the light of the world becoming our personal guiding light within. Now consider this, that if you've asked Jesus Christ, to come into your heart, inviting him to be your personal Lord. He now resides inside of you. Thank you, Lord. This means that you are the hands and feet of Jesus in the earth today. The glory has come and Christ arises from within you. Yes. How can you share the miracle of Christ's life with others around you this Christmas season? How can you share Jesus Christ? the hope that we have, the glory that we carry. How can we share this to the world that is so hurting you, and desperate around us? We must look for opportunities to shine the light that's been given. Now, John chapter one, and I want you to read this, Janet, John chapter one, verses one to four. In the beginning before all time was the word Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with mm -hmm. God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. And then in John chapter 1, verse 14, mm -hmm. it goes on and says, And the word Christ became flesh and lived among us. And we actually saw his glory. Glory yes. as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father, the son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. Yes. It's speaking about Jesus being the light. 
We now carry this light. This is a Christmas miracle. This is the fourth Christmas miracle that we're talking about. The eternal God becoming human, earthly flesh that dwells among us. And you know what? Jesus is still dwelling on the earth through his people. Yes, he has returned to heaven. He has gone up to be with the Father to prepare a place for us. And we know that he will come again. Amen. But in the meantime, he has given us his Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of the Anointed One, so that we are filled with the abundance of Jesus, that everywhere we go, we carry the power, the presence, and the, the, the potential of Christ Amen. to deliver, to heal, to set free, to bring salvation to the lost, those that are desperate, those that need a savior. Amen. Jesus prayed this prayer. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. He was looking for a people that will be so connected to heaven, people that will be yes. so united with him. Bringing heaven's realities here to the this earth. Is the, this is the mystical yes. reality and the, the, the beautiful mystery that Christ in us, the hope of glory, is residing. And where we go, we get to release Christ to others. Mm-hmm. They get to experience Jesus. Why? Because of our touch. Yes. Because of our kindness. Because of the words we speak. Because of the anointing that's that's upon us. Because of the glory atmosphere that we bring and we introduce Amen. them to. So just as people are driving around looking for Christmas lights, your life yes. is a Christmas light. Ooh, shalabha kasten. Your life I love that. is on display as a Christmas light, shining bright with yes. his glory and his goodness, yes. his grace and his favor. Yes. It is really a Christmas light. Mm-hmm. That That's Christ Mass. Christ, the anointed one, and mass is speaking about a service or a, a, a time of worship. Yeah. And so our, our life is really to worship Christ, the anointed one, Amen. and to release that anointing everywhere we go. So Amen. we are Christmas lights. Yes. In the truest sense of the word, we are Christmas lights in the earth. That's beautiful. Bling, bling. And this is a Christmas <laughs> miracle. Now, yes. no, miracle number five. This is the miracle of heavenly favor. When the Christ child was born in the lowly manger of Bethlehem, his arrival into the earth could almost have gone completely unnoticed. Uh As the prophesied king of glory, he didn't arrive in the palace with pompous fanfare. And yet God had a plan for the world to know that this was indeed the son of God. Mm -hmm. There was no need for Mary or Joseph to push and shove trying to convince others of what the spirit had spoken to them. Jesus' birth was announced in a heavenly way (laughs) through the celestial voices of of an angelic choir. Favor surrounds every part of the Christmas story. And favor surrounds your life as a child (laughs) of God. I love this, Janet, because so many people feel so many people feel the compulsion to push and shove, trying to prove I need this title in in front of my name. Well, if I've got a prophetic ministry, then I have to call myself prophet or prophetess because people need to know what, how I'm anointed. Now, listen, you might have a legitimate anointing on you. Stop shoving, stop pushing, stop trying so hard. Don't try so hard. Allow God to do his work. Rest in the favor of God. Yes. Allow him to open up the doors. Allow him to announce your arrival into a room, into a city, into a <laughs> an atmosphere. Let God do yes. what he does supernaturally. There was no need for Mary and Joseph to worry like, well, we're going to have to get some banners made that say that this is the king of the world. We're going to have to get brochures made. We're going to have to get advertisements on the television to tell people that this is the savior of the world. Yeah. No, they had no reason to worry. That's right. Angels showed up singing the praises of, of Jesus saying, this is Emmanuel, God with us. This is who he is. The Holy Spirit knows how to do The government will be upon marketing. his shoulders. Wow. The Holy, the Holy Spirit knows how to take care of divine does. strategies. And I love this Praise last God. line that you read. Favor surrounds every part of the Christmas story and favor surrounds your life as a child of yes. God. Yes, yes. This portion of the story speaks to us about God's divine plan, timings, yep. and perfect will being fulfilled for those who stay yielded to and guided by 
and focused on the spirit. Yes. And so we can read this, this encounter here in Luke chapter two, How verses God made eight his to 17. Known to the shepherds in the fields. Let's read it. In the same region, there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. You know, we've read these passages <laughs> every year during this season, mm -hmm. but isn't it amazing? The revelation that's being pulled out of yes. this. I love it. For us right yes. now. For us to say, okay, this is something that happened, yes. but this is also something that's happening. Yes. It's happening Current. in the glory right now right in the now. glory. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, <laughs> which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. And you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. I mean, he got the full announcement. Sure did. Every, the full, detailed, the, specific, prophetic announcement. But do you see how many times in, the, in these passages that we've been sharing tonight, there is a call to not be afraid because yeah. it was so dramatic and so yeah. profound, the miraculous and yeah. so extraordinary and, and unusual and human nature when it encounters the new or encounters something so extraordinary, you know, fear tries to creep in because yeah. of the unknown. So this is a major word for all mm -hmm. of us tonight. Do not be afraid. Amen. What you're going through right now. Don't be afraid. Sister, don't be afraid. Brother, do not be afraid. That's right. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Um, I, I saw a wonder. I was at the florist today getting you some flowers. Thank you. And I saw a cute, I saw a cute little plaque on the wall that said, give it to God and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. I, I saw that and I thought that that is so true. And this is a revelation that we need to receive. Give it to God and go to sleep. Yeah. Rest. Learn how to live in the yes. rest. Do not be afraid. Live in the rest. God has. God has Amen. taken care of this for you. Okay. So continue on the scriptures. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, angelic army, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among men with whom he is well pleased. And when the angels had gone away from, from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying one to another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known what had been told them about this child. Wow. Amazing. Now, because we're coming up to the hour yeah. time period here, I want to close this. We're going to, we're going to stop here. Get your email on our email list. We will send you the notes. You'll get all yes. seven of these Christmas miracles. We were able to go through and read you five of them, but we're going to send the other two to you and you're going to get them and you can study this, this all the way out. Yeah. I do want to say the reason I was at the florist is because this is Janet's birthday week. Janet is celebrating a birthday on Friday this week. And so happy birthday, darling. Thank you. Honey. We love you. We appreciate We are also very, very thankful for you Thanks, and honey. thankful for your life. And so all together, let's sing happy oh birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Janet. Happy birthday to you. You, I love you, darling. I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> You're oh the best goodness. thing that ever happened to me. Oh my goodness. Besides Jesus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we pray that you have been blessed tonight. Yes. We expect miracles to happen Jesus. today, tonight, this week for you. Yes. We want to hear about them. Leave comments in the comment section down below what God is speaking to you as we're sharing this about the Christmas story, as we're talking about the revelation of receiving Christmas miracles through Amen. what God has provided in Christ Jesus and this wonderful testimony of his birth. Um, this is a season for expectation. Amen. This is a season to expect miracles big time. And I believe that God is working overtime right now on your behalf. He's got angels ahead of you working all around you. We sure love you. 
We appreciate you showing up. And next week we're going to have a Christmas celebration together. And it's going to be wonderful. Yes. Love it. Love each and every one of you so much. Continue to have a God week. And remember where there's great love, there are always great miracles. Join us right here next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time for Glory Bible Study. <laughs> love you. Good night.